all the picks, give our takes on, uh, you know, who stood out, what teams, you know, had a good draft, who didn't, in our opinions. And uh, I thought the whole thing went well. I'll say that first and foremost as a fan, you know, watching the ESPN, watching Goodell in front of his, you know, in, in his basement, uh, watching the fans through the TV. I thought, you know, they had that pre, pre-draft pre process on this past Monday. Ridiculous. A run through of, you know, how the draft was going to go. And they had some malfunctions. And, you know, through the whole – through the whole draft, there was there was no problems at all, which was great. And I thought they uh, ESPN put together a nice job there. And uh, you know, Joe Burrow was starting off pick with number one with the, with the Bengals. Um, you Who know, saw that coming? Everything. Yeah, was, yeah, 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 yeah. I think um, everybody in the entire say, world also say two and not falling either was uh, was good. I mean, I, I think uh, he he deserved to be picked high, even though he had those injury problems. But you know, we're here to talk Eagles. We're as Eagles fans here and. I'll tell you what, one of the one of the more uh, memorable drafts in recent memory in our lifetimes, especially uh, going through all these picks. And uh, let's start with pick number one for the Eagles, uh, Jalen Rager, wide receiver. Yeah, T, T, I know you want to like get going with this, but you know, I j- I just want, if you don't mind, I would like to start this off just because I I know that you and Max and Tampa have a lot more to say than me. Yeah. Um, with you being a real big film guy, too, I, I know that you um, I know that one of your big rules is to not watch highlights. Correct. And, you know, if I'm being honest, I didn't watch Jalen Rager at all this year. Mm-hmm. To me, he was just a, another name on a list. So I didn't really know much about the guy. So I go, I check him out. And, you know, 60, 60 70% of these highlights I'm seeing of Jalen Rager are kick and punt returns, which, okay, good. Uh, if he's a good special teams guy, that's great. He does look like he's a smart runner. He's very aware on the field. But with someone who's being picked in the first round, I want to see what he brings to the line of scrimmage. Now, what I did see of him, the little bit I did see, whenever he lined up on the outside, he's going deep. He's got good speed. It seems like almost every time he was going deep, he could get by the corner, Mm -hmm. make space for himself, and be a good threat. Uh he does look like he's pretty good at getting 50-50 balls, even though he's only, like, what, 5'8"? But that's, that's against really college good. competition. Um, but uh, whenever he lined up in the slot, it just seemed like he couldn't quite shake whoever was on him. It, it just didn't seem like he could ever, within in the slot running routes, he could quite – he never seemed like he could quite create time and space for himself in college. So I'm concerned about how he might fit in this – offense but it looks like he could be a good deep threat but I mean that's just what I've seen from him and I haven't really seen a whole lot from him. Can um, I just can I just uh, run through the process of my exact reaction for when we uh drafted the it, person go ahead because I still got to get my um, together without me so, throwing out explicitives so you know the uh it was it was going pretty well with you know, thinking that we were going to get a guy until about the 12th pick, you start getting nervous because the, uh, the Raiders take rugs off the board. And so you're like, okay, you know, rugs was – we knew it would be – we'd probably have to trade up to get rugs. And then so a couple picks later, you start getting real nervous. Uh, you have the teams above uh, – ahead of us are Falcons, Cowboys, Dolphins, Raiders, and Jags. At that point, that's when you start getting real nervous because you're like, like, the guy that we really wanted was C.D. Lamb, and I know Max was uh, talking about him a few shows ago and how he was uh, impressed with what he looked at. And then I checked out his um, his highlights, and I was impressed with him too. And then a site that really makes everyone's blood boil is that you're looking at those teams, you're like, I don't think anyone's really going to – no one really needs a wide receiver, the teams that are ahead of us, those, two, those teams that I named. And then you see Jerry Jones over there smiling and – more giddy than usual. Yeah, sitting in a quarter of a billion dollar yacht. And then all of a sudden you're like, no, no, he's not going to do it. He's, he's not going to do it to us. And then <laughs> sure enough, he, they, the Cowboys draft uh, C.D. Lamb. And then you're like, okay, I guess Justin Jefferson it is. To our surprise, we don't get Justin Jefferson, but we get Rager, okay? <laughs> and as soon as we draft Rager, I'm expecting, obviously expecting – Justin Jefferson, and I hear the first letter J, and I'm like, okay, Justin Jefferson. Then he finishes Jalen Rager. I'm like, who's this guy? Who's Jalen Rager? What? 
And I'm sure that was mostly everyone's um, response. But of course, we got to give everyone a chance. And I did look at the, you know, the highlights. Obviously, you can't look too much into the highlights because they can make anyone seem like they're a potential Hall of Famer that you draft. Mm -hmm. Um, But obviously, last year we saw that with Andre Dillard there. But this guy's going to be amazing. And we, we see how that's turned out so far. But I see uh, the positives. He's very athletic. He's fast, shifty. Uh, like um, Chris mentioned, how getting up there to get the passes, uh, even though he's you know he's not tall, he he still gets up there. But something that uh, us as Philly fans are definitely we don't like, considering who we had catching the ball and dropping it last season, was Nelson Aguilar. And a uh, rigger is known for drops. Um, he, you know, he, he's known for drops. That's the biggest thing on his negatives and he struggles to work through contact. Um, and he did have a drop off in production, um, last season, but that you can blame that on quarterback play. Oh boy. Oh boy. I am. I'm livid. I'm li- I'm livid for a couple reasons because First off, like you said, we had a chance to draft one of the top three wide receivers in this in this draft. And unfortunately, we couldn't do it because for some reason, Howie Roseman didn't want to trade up ahead of the Cowboys and draft CeeDee Lamb. Prolific receiver. We all talked about him throughout the weeks. We all love his game. And trust me, we would have been delighted absolutely delighted to have C.D. Lamb as a Philadelphia Eagle, but unfortunately, due to Howie Roseman's incompetence, we settled for Jalen Rager. Now, I don't have a problem with his game. Yes, I like the pick, but at the same time, we reached for him. He had a, he had a day too great on him. He was going to be drafted in the second round. And then to make matters worse, like right after we drafted – uh, Jalen Rager, the Vikings drafted Justin Jefferson. Now, if I were the GM, I would have fleeced the crap out of the Vikings again and got another draft pick. Reason being, even if I couldn't trade up to get CeeDee Lamb, I'd have been like, all right, listen, hey, Vikings, y'all want Justin Jefferson? I'm about to draft him. What y'all finna do? Fleece the crap out of them. If they want him that bad, guess what? A team will be desperate enough. Desperate enough. Desperate. Honestly, T, I, I don't know if the Vikings really wanted Justin Jefferson. I think they were expecting us to get Justin Jefferson, and he fell in their lap. Um, that's what I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, okay. That, okay. Um, sure. 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 Um, yeah, sure. You can, you can say that, absolutely. But at the same time, I still feel as though you could have kind of fleeced them still into something. And then on top of that, you still could have traded back, period, because once again, Jalen Reger was, wasn't going to be drafted in the first round. He was going to be drafted in the second round. Everybody here is making really good points. Hard to argue. Not to say the Vikings don't need uh, another receiver after they gave, you know, Diggs goes to the Bills. Uh, the Vikings definitely do need that guy receiving. So that, that is a better fit uh, for them than whoever they would have got if we got it. I was really uh, ready for the Eagles to take Justin Jefferson. And me personally, I, w- I didn't want Justin Jefferson. Um, mm-hmm. and, and the reason is because he's a slot receiver. We didn't Correct. have a receiver. So um, I knew he was a good player. You know, I'm a big college football guy. You guys know that. And so I've seen him throughout the whole season at LSU, watching him win a national championship. But I didn't think at that point he was a good fit for us. And uh, the more I watch these drafts each year, the more I just – know that Howie Roseman is unpredictable. A lot of people were saying Jalen Rager was like flying up the draft boards. And, you know, I picked 21, probably a little high. Like that's just off the bat, you know, probably a little high for Jalen Rager. He would have been gone maybe end of the first at best, in my opinion. And uh, if we really wanted him that bad, I'm sure we probably could have traded up in the second round to grab him. I'm against trading up for CeeDee Lamb. One, because um, I didn't really want to give up that second round pick. Um, and we'll get to that shortly because that's another crazy pick. But uh, I didn't want to give up that second-round pick because I know how valuable it was. And I also knew this team had multiple holes that it needed to fill. 
for the upcoming season. And I figured, okay, maybe we, we take, you know, Kenneth Murray. That's kind of who I had on my board, maybe even Xavier McKinney, the safety, uh, because you know, you guys know I'm not sold on Jalen Mills for a full 16 games at safety. I agree with you. Uh, so I, I was thinking, okay, maybe Xavier McKinney in the second round, especially because he fell to the second round uh, and he didn't even go in the first, but, uh, going with Jalen Rager, uh, I think if we did this show on Thursday night after uh, round one, we would all be sitting here freaking out uh, about how mad we are. That's and stupid. I, I would be one of those people. But the fact that we had two days to digest this pick, um, I, I, I start, I'm starting to like it more and more. I think this guy is a playmaker. You know, he's not a guy you just plug in and, okay, he's a solid. He's a solid guy. He'll give you some good production. And we need the guys on this team that are playmakers and can win games with, I'd say, one or two big-time plays um, that you just don't expect, you know. Talk about yeah. Tyreek Hill, how great his speed is. I'm not saying this guy has that speed. I think nobody does. Has Ty- no, one, no one has Tyreek Hill speed. Tyree Absolutely Hill. not. But Absolutely this guy not. can be one of those playmakers that, you know, we, we bring out of the backfield, uh, run, run those bubble screens for, or he can just take the top off with these uh, with these deep passes. And I think this guy's got a good skill set. Remains to be seen um, what his drop situation are. I know Tammy mentioned that. He did struggle with drops, um, which is not something we would like to hear, especially uh, having to deal with Nelson Aguilar for the past few seasons. But, again, uh, that's just a work in progress. Once he gets along with Wentz and uh, gets brought into the system, I'm sure everything will get worked out. And, listen, he's going to have every opportunity to succeed because, honestly, he's probably our number one receiver as we speak. I'll put him ahead of Alshon Jeffrey. And I'm even going to put him ahead of Deshaun Jackson at this point because, one, we know Alshon Jeffrey might not even be ready for week one because of that uh, that surgery he underwent in the offseason. And Deshaun Jackson, can you really count on him for a full 16? No. Probably not. No, so you can't. No. I, do, I, do, uh, I do see why how he made this pick. And uh, I know as two days now have gone by since the pick, I think all of our opinions, maybe we, our, our tension have, uh, tensions have decreased a little bit. Um, so I think – Again, this this was a solid pick. Uh, we're thinking long term about it. I do think me drafting, I probably would have went defense here, um, but there wasn't a guy on this board that I that just jumped out to me where I was like, okay, we need to get this guy. You know, the the guy would have been CD Lamb if CD Lamb fell to twenty one. Uh, I would have been like, oh, we had to jump all over him. You know, but again, yeah. I always go back to the thing where these guys know more than we do, um, and you know, it's it's pretty crazy because we're gonna move on to our second pick here. And that, that's Jalen Hurts. Once, once I say the fact that these guys know more than we do, and then, and then I say, oh, we got Jalen Hurts. This is some bullshit. Now, that. Max, before you go too far into this Hurts thing, I still have a few things to touch on uh, Rager. And you All said right. uh, you compared his speed. Uh, you said no one can compare to Tyreek Hill. And mm-hmm. I did see this stat where the highest uh, reached game speed, Tyreek Hill was uh, 22.64, and Jalen Rager was 22.60 miles per hour. Yeah. So that's also something. And what you were saying about uh, rather picking a defensive player after – it does make sense because after you miss out on the top receivers, you don't really want to reach for a receiver exactly. that you can get in the second round. You want to get a player that's at the top of their position. And we did have a shot mm-hmm. to do that, but we decided to draft Jalen Rager. Mm-hmm. And I also – for Rager, I have um, – because he did drop off in production. And I have his stats right here. In 2018, uh, he played 13 games. He had 72 receptions, 1,061 receiving yards, uh, 13 carries for 170 rushing yards, 11 total touchdowns. Mm -hmm. But in 2019, he played 12 games. He had 43 receptions, 611 receiving yards, 14 carries for 89 rushing yards, five total touchdowns. So he did – I guess you could – a lot of people are blaming it on quarterback um play so Mm -hmm. i'll I'll give him that benefit of the doubt the counter argument to that is the big 12 uh the cold conference uh doesn't play any defense you know every game's a shootout there i think we all know that oklahoma scoring like 60 points a game with Hurts as a quarterback there even tcu who actually had a decent amount of draft picks go in this draft i know they weren't a great team all season long but they did have a a bunch of picks go um as far as far as to wrap up on rager here i'm going to give my last point and you guys could Uh, chime in if you have anything else to say about him but this guy uh, when I first saw the name I thought he was like a gadget player you know somebody that you can bring out of the backfield almost line him up 
uh, double double formation, you know, one maybe him next to Wentz and, and else have Sanders there and kind of run him and weave him out of the backfield on one of those wheel routes, for example, something like that. The more I, the more I look at look at him and uh, people will point to his production last season, how, how, you know, small it was, you know, 611 receiving yards for the number 21 overall pick in the draft is almost laughable, you know, and I can agree with that too. Uh, but again, the, the quarterback play was a factor there. Um, and before doing more research on that, I didn't really know. I didn't pretty much, I didn't make it a factor because, you know, every D1 quarterback is talented, especially when you're playing in a power five conference, then you go to look, actually look at the stats. You say, okay, you can understand why people would make that argument, but Again, I, I, the, the fact that we've had two days to think about this pick and also needing speed and needing a wide receiver, two big-time needs that, you know, we filled in, in one pick uh, definitely will benefit us for the upcoming season. Uh, all right, boys, are we ready to talk about this next pick? Uh, just Rip the uh, Band-Aid off, too. Oh, jeez. I'm, I'm befuddled. I'm confused. Who's the pick? I'm taken aback. I'm shocked. You almost sound hurt. Uh, uh-huh. I'm like, I'm, I'm just, what? I don't know what the heck is going on. I don't know what the heck they were thinking with this draft pick. How in the hell do you draft a damn quarterback in the second freaking round? I'm sorry. Please make some sense out of this for me. Please, yeah. fellas, please tell me I'm crazy. Please tell me I'm the crazy one. And you guys, like you guys tell me all the time, hey, T, I understand you're the football guy, but you're going crazy with this. Please tell me I'm going crazy. Please tell me I'm not the only one who thinks about this. I just T, want to add one T, thing. Oh, you sorry, Max. To go. Uh, I just think that as Philadelphia fans in the city, if we heard these picks go in real time and everybody was at the draft, we would just hear all the boos. And to make matters worse, yeah. People would have booed Rager because they wanted Jefferson. That's just how Philly fans are. But then to add Hurts, the quarterback in the second round, that would have made that would have been icing on the cake. That, that, that to just make matters worse and and people fans even more angry. Go go Rager, a guy they've probably never heard of, and then go Jalen Hurts, a quarterback who we probably did, or I mean I know we all probably didn't think we needed him. Obviously Howie and Doug have something else up their sleeve, but uh, Kirk Max. Got, that's just my, that's just my T- opinion. T- Max, th- this draft pick straight up tells me that they are not confident in Carson Wentz staying healthy for a whole season. Yeah, it's definitely – That's that's exactly what this pick tells me. Because you don't pick a guy who's going to be riding – you intend to have ride bench the whole time in the second round. Here's my point I want to make real quick. If Wentz doesn't get hurt against Seattle and if we actually win that game – because you got to remember, Wentz started a full 16 games regular season last year. If Wentz doesn't have that freak injury – if he beats Seattle, even if he loses to Seattle, are we making this pick here in the second round? I'm going to say probably not. Probably okay. not. So that's just that's something you got to think about, man. It's it's something yeah. we would have probably drafted Jake Fromm from in the fourth or fifth round. There you go. Some I'll freak tell you what. happens, man. And, and this is this is what you know. It has it has future uh, repercussions for it. You know, um, if if Wentz doesn't get hurt, you know, down the line here, look at that one play influences. Howie's decision to take hurts, in my opinion. Now, me and Max were talking back and forth um, when this happened. And, you know, we noticed J.K. Dobbins was still on the board. And mm-hmm. Max I, Max was saying that he wanted the Eagles to draft him. I was like, no way he's still going to be there. Uh, yeah. There's teams like, you know, the you Buccaneers and yeah. um, teams like that that definitely need a running back mm-hmm. and he would make sense for it. But then our pick comes up and we – and. And as Max said, J.K. Dobbins is right there for us. He's he's in our lap. He's in the fell that far. You know, wait, waiting for us. And then we draft a quarterback, also named. I guess we have something for Jalen's. Um, mm. And at at overall fifty third pick, obviously you knew Jalen uh, Hurts was going to get picked in this round, but uh, I wasn't sure that he was going to go to the Eagles and like. Like you guys said, does this what's this do for Carson Wentz? Uh, does this put more pressure on him, and does he benefit from this? That uh, the the organization drafts a quarterback in the second round, and a quarterback well known who was almost uh, a Heisman winner. He was he came in second. Now Joe Burrow did win by a landslide, um, but Jalen Hurts received uh, the second most votes. Yeah, his his career Oklahoma. Uh, in the season that he was there, I mean, it was it was great. Yeah. You, know, you can argue with the stats. 
he had 9,477 yards, 80 touchdowns, and this is his career, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, he's replaced in Alabama by Tua, and he goes to Oklahoma and has the kind of season that he has. It's just amazing. question. Uh, about is this beneficial for Wentz? I mean, I don't think I don't think you. Can Hell no! Beneficial for him? Hell no! No, it ain't beneficial. <laughs> Why would you listen? I'm sorry. I'm sorry because it, it still frustrates me. So I called my uncle. Shout out to Uncle G. I called him last night when the draft pick went down because I'm trying. I'm. I was still in shock. I'm still trying to make sense of this. So if I have questions about something, I'm going to call him up. That's usually my that's my leaning pole when it comes to the game of football. Even he didn't he didn't have an answer. I got nothing. I'm frustrated at this point. There were so many other options on the board. Shoot, you could have went double at wide receiver like Tanner suggested. Hey, I thought you know I thought what would make sense is um, three straight wide receivers. You know, one of them's got to hit right. <laughs> one of them's got to be good enough. Um, and I definitely thought that's what Howie was gonna do, but. Drafting a player like Hertz gives you more options. Um, as I believe Booger was saying this when we drafted uh, Hertz, I was thinking the same thing, but Booger went and said it. You know, uh, what's, you know what's funny? Booger says a lot of things that's interesting and like raises my eyebrow, but that was the one time where he went against everybody. Like He completely yeah. went against the grain. He was the <laughs> only one that was like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, we could use him as you know, what the, the kind of situation they have in New Orleans with um with Hill uh playing many different positions. Um and Hertz was asked during the uh, combine to, you know, play another position besides quarterback and he declined to do that and wanted to show everyone that he could play quarterback. So how does it feel for him, a player like him, knowing he's going to a team where he's not gonna be the starting quarterback? What's he here for? <laughs> honestly, if I were, if I would honestly be thinking that, what am I here for? <laughs> do you, do you think that he thinks he can compete for this starting job? I think he can compete for the starting. I think he should. Every competitor knows, like every competitor inside you has to think, I'm here to be a quarterback. I'm here to be a starter. If you settle and say, oh, I'm just here to have fun and, you know, ride the pine behind Wentz the whole season, that's not your mentality. If I'm him, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go out there and I'm going to beat Wentz for this starting job. And on top of that, I'm going to stay healthy the whole season. But it's just, it, it does raise a question just because of the contract we paid Wentz. That's what I look at. If Wentz was on his last year of his deal here and you're thinking, okay, all right, well, he can't stay healthy. It's not his fault half the time. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's not. We know that over the past few seasons. But the fact that we gave him $107 million guaranteed, um, that's, that's one thing where I look at it and I'm like, wow, okay, this, this is an interesting pick. Now, listening to Doug Peterson's comments after we drafted him, he said, yeah, Tanner, what you pointed out, Taysom Hill type of player. Um, he's got a great speed, uh, can roll out of the pocket. They have a bunch of plays they could, uh, you know, use for him, roll, roll him out. He's good. He's a great thrower on the run. And we've seen that in college, but I don't know. I, I think, listen, if Wentz continues to get hurt, uh, not again. It, sometimes it's just just the the way it goes. I mean, if he gets hurt again this season, I mean, geez, I know. Even if it's not his fault, I mean, it's like, come on, this is going to be what three years in a row now, or four years. I don't know, however many years it's been where he gets hurt. Not Man, his that's... fault, or if it is, I mean, that's a problem. And hurts. Listen, hurts. You can make an argument is better than Jordan Love, who went in the first round. I could definitely make that argument. Yeah, you get no argument for me on that one, but yeah. I can also make the argument with the fact that I understand what you're saying, Max, that yes, and Carson Wentz supposedly has an injury history, which his rookie season, he didn't get hurt. He played all 16 games. And this past season, he played all 16 games. So I don't know exactly where this injury history thing is coming from. I mean, shoot, Donovan McNabb had an injury history. But even oh, still, that's not hey, brought up hey, in history. Hey, hey. But not let me go back to my point. Let me go back to my point, Okay. You just paid Carson Wentz $100 million guaranteed 10 months ago. Now, T, T, this is what I think's happened. This, this does go against uh, everything I believe in. I'm still on the Wentz wagon, although I, I do tease T a lot for uh, being Damn in much. denial sometimes, which he is. He's in, in denial most of our shows. Yeah. But <laughs> I do think maybe this is Howie Roseman saying um, or admitting that he may have been too high on Carson Wentz. And then what? now he's trying to fix something before it completely falls apart by drafting a quarterback high in the second round. 
then why then why, why give up all those assets? Pay why pay Carson Wentz all that money? Why did you trade up all those assets? Um, what was it, four or five years ago to draft him? Here, here's what I'm going to say about Hurts real quick, just to add in here. Uh, I think Jalen Hurts, the one thing I, I like about him, you could say whatever you want about his college and all of his intangibles, his college play, his stats, maybe they're inflated because, you know, Oklahoma and a high-powered offense. One thing I liked about Jalen Hurts, even watching him at Alabama, you know, because uh, he's, he's pl- started a lot of games and he hasn't lost too many of them. But I will say that his mental and physical toughness, I mean, this is a guy who will not be outworked by anybody. And he hates – That's what I'm saying to you. He, he just – he does. He hates to lose. And he takes it personally when he when he takes one of those few losses. And I think his work ethic is far – just what Philly tough is about. I think this guy's going to come in here. I think it's going to be a perfect fit. I know it's a weird fit, but I think it's going to be a perfect fit for the, uh, the – just, just his attitude, his mindset, what he brings to the table. I'm not uh, – I'm not doubting. I'm not doubting none of that stuff. We want to have. I mean, listen. I'll even I'll add this. Add the uh, the fact that Justin Herbert. People are saying attitude issues and maybe not a great team leader. There, it, people were iffy about him. I, know I don't like Justin Herbert, Herbert like that. To be honest with you, I think he has a, a lot of um, accuracy issues. But that's just me yeah. personally. And he Jake went from sliding down to the fifth round. Also, is surprising. Jacob Eason, another pick. I don't know. I, I, I thought it was weird at first, and my jaw dropped just like the rest of Philly when this pick went through. But, again, like I mentioned earlier in the show, having two days or I guess having that one day to think about the pick, I, you can. there's so many different opinions. And, again, it's going to just keep our show uh, even more entertaining, being able to give our opinions on this for weeks to come. Uh, but, again, there's so many different ways you can go with this. Do we, do we have Hurts to trade them? Maybe the Patriots say, you know what? I'll give you – I'll give you – I don't know, maybe a, a future pick. I'll give you maybe throwing a player that they have that we could use. I don't know. And, again, that's what I was thinking on draft night or draft day today even. Do, do we give Hurts away to New England, for example, needing a quarterback? Still, Tanner, you mentioned that. They didn't draft. Hey, Julian Edelman's looking to get out of New England. So uh, – Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, let's – yeah, let's let's start another Patriot dynasty by giving them one of the best tight ends in the NFL. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's do that. I don't know what this, what's going to happen with Chris. the Hurts, but I think this is just going to be fun to watch. Us as Philly sports fans, we love entertainment. We love our teams. Not that kind of entertainment. This is going to be T. This is going to be fun. I'm telling you. What if Hurts? What if Hurts outworks Wentz and, and wins the starting job? I don't no. think that's going to happen. No, well, number one, that's not going to happen. And two, you just burn hundred million dollars in cap money. Hey, T. Why it won't happen is because of the money. I know Hertz has some things to work on in, with in with the college level. I'm talking. I'm not talking this upcoming season. I'm talking down the road a little bit. Hey. If the Eagles maybe don't make the playoffs, because you got to remember these other teams in division have really nice drafts as well. So if there's some frustration building, if there's injury problems building with Wentz. And that continues. We got Hurts now. We have, and I will add in this. This will be my last point before I let you guys go. Uh, I will say we have to stop paying ten million dollars to our backup quarterback. Foles was one. Uh, we had Chase Daniel, like ten million to back up. We're paying Hurts on a on a pe- peanuts contract now, and he's pretty damn good. All right. Um, I I'd like to say we keep bringing up how much money we've paid Wentz. And how that means um, he's going to be the starting quarterback. But we've seen this happen. And Max uh, mentioned this man's name, Nick Foles, quarter, starting quarterback for the Jaguars, gets injured first quarter, first game. And now they trade him away because they're, co- they're more confident in their second string quarterback with Gardner Minshew. And now he's Nick Foles is a member of the Chicago Bears. But we did see that happen where they pay yeah, a quarterback so much money and he only plays in one quarter. And they give up on him like yeah. that. And he did, he did uh, underperform when he came back from injury. Yeah. I'll give, I'll, I will say that. All right. You get no, you get no argument from me on that. That is true. But all the meanwhile, at the same time, I think we all know Nick Foles is silly. Unfortunately. I mean, you guys, glo- you guys glorify the ground that he walks on. Listen, but we he, all know. I see. Right. Right. He, he, but he brought us the Super Bowl, So we yeah. have to, we always have to give him our praises. Damn it. Stop bringing up the damn Super Bowl already. It's in the past. Leave it alone. Jeez. I know. I, I'm anyway, trying to win another one, damn it. You, you can't bring that up to a Carson Wentz fan. It's getting old, too. But we want to look into the future here. Um, and I will say, Jalen Hurts, I don't know. It, 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 it's, it's just fun. It's, it's fun to talk about. It's just it's a fun to sit here and, and 
think, you know, all the different things that could happen, which direction will this team go? It's me personally. I think it's season one because we have him on a contract, a rookie contract, but I will say my point in season one, we're going to use him like Tanner said in the Taysom Hill role. I think he's going to come in there, especially to give Wentz, maybe he won't meant Wentz won't have to play as many, you know, snaps, won't have to throw the ball as much. Uh, but I think that's kind of the role he's going to use them in. And it's it's shown to be effective. You know, Taysom Hill in, in New Orleans, uh, that's worked out. You have to have the right coaching staff in place, which we do, in my opinion. And this this thing could work with Hurts in season one. We don't know what's going to happen in season two, three, four. But we know in season one, I think, where they're headed with this uh, idea in their head. Another issue I have with this draft pick is I've talked about this with you guys. In rounds one through three, I want starters on my team starting from day one, rounds, rounds one through three. That's what I expect when I draft somebody in those rounds, a starter, immediate starter. He we doesn't have Taylor. to be a flashy starter, but damn it, I want a starter. We added uh, depth to our linebacker with Taylor from Colorado. I like that. I like that, pick. He, I like that pick. He has good closing speed. Got to work on his coverage, though. Let's run through the rest of our picks, um, and Maybe we can on comment Taylor. on each one. We get Wallace uh, in round four, Clemson. Uh, Driscoll, also round four, Auburn. I like that pick. Hightower, Boise State, another wide receiver. Uh, Bradley from Temple. Um, and then Watkins, round six. You got, uh, we got a Prince on our team uh, <laughs> out of Auburn. And uh, was that it or who else? Who was the last one? He- the last one we got was uh, Casey Toolhill, who was a mm-hmm. DN slash outside linebacker. From Stanford. Him. And we did get three wide receivers, T. Like I uh, like I wanted, just not not uh, in order. No, nah. in order. No, nah, no. Nah. Um, Kez, uh, what Kez Watkins out of Southern Miss? Mm-hmm. Um, not sure. I haven't watched. Uh, you yeah, know, the these third guys highlights. Uh, Forty yard dash out of receivers. Okay. Yeah, these guys, these guys, man, they're all Blazers. Okay, um, they're good in kick return, punt return situations. That's kind of sort of what they were looking for, um, in terms of these receivers and you know how they're going to utilize them on Sundays. Yeah. So, I mean, let's, all right. Let's start out here. Let's start out with uh, Davion Taylor. Uh, this is a guy who I know the first two picks were questionable and they're to be determined, but I think this is the first pick that, that makes sense. Yes. Dunk. This guy Gosh. is a ridiculous athlete. This guy is going to go sideline to sideline. Um, and he's just the kind of outside linebacker we need. This guy is going to be able to – you know, get off the edges and bring that uh, speed off the edges with the blitzes. Uh, we know how Jim Schwartz likes to use his players at a positionless type of scheme. Uh, but this guy, uh, just just reading his analysis, uh, birth, uh, burst and, and great athletic ability. Um, he has the ability to compete in man-to-man coverage if you need him to. Um, but again, they said he's going to be a good player in special teams, and then but but again, eventually by maybe year two he'll be thrust into that starter role. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if it's definitely your one either because we need guys at that linebacking position. And Colorado was a solid team last year. I will say that. They they were they had that uh that one receiver too, uh LaVisca Chenault, who ended up going in the draft. I think he went to the Jaguars. But uh they had a good overall team last year. And this guy was a big part of it. Um he's he's not he doesn't have the size um that you want in the in a typical linebacker, but listen we didn't go for size this year. We went for strictly speed all over the place. Speed which is athletes. which is fine. Like you said, he I mean, he's a hell of a player. I'm not even gonna, you know, discount that. Yeah. Of course, y'all know immediately when the pick was, you know, taken, y'all know I went straight to the tape. So I lo- I love that Colorado defense and the way they flew around the ball, especially him. Um, big credit to him. Like you said, he's not a big guy, but that's what you need in today's NFL with the way these offenses are built, they're trying to spread everybody out. So to be honest with you, a lot of these linebackers, these old school linebackers that used to be 6'3", 6'4", you know, 240 pounds, honestly, they're becoming dinosaurs now unless they're able to keep up with these young guys, you know, in the spread offense and the speed. So I like I like this pick. The only thing I have a problem with this pick, um, in terms of his play, because he's small, he's going to get eaten up in a run game. And I have seen that a couple times in a couple of clips where uh, an offensive line has just engulfed him and he just can't shut off that block. That's the one issue I have, as a matter of fact, with all of our linebackers. That's cool that you want to get undersized and you're more worried about coverage and you're relying on your defensive line to stop the run. That's fine. But then when that defensive line collapses and they can't, 
do their job. It's up to the linebackers to make up for that. And if you don't have big enough linebackers, strong enough linebackers to be able to stand up and shed off these blocks, you got issues. You're going to let some big runs through. And I see your point. And I'm going to, and you, you just brought up what I was going to say about the D line. I think that's what we're, the Eagles are banking on drafting, uh, or I shouldn't say um, signing Hargra- Hargrave, which is going to be a, a good signing for us, and having that rotational set of D tackles. I think they're hoping, you know what, let's just bust through these offensive linemen and get to that running back. These, they, they, all they really need to do is just get a hand on them. You know, I'm not, in one-on-one situations, you know, if Zeke gets through a hole and, and then he's going one-on-one with Taylor, uh, the linebacker we just drafted, I mean, that's a problem. But, again, if, if – the, the D tackles can at least slow them down or make them make them make an extra cut, you know, towards the middle or to the outside gives our linebackers a little bit extra time to get there. And then these guys are professional athletes. So they'll wrap them up. And that's one thing I will say about Taylor. He's a great tackler. And that's what we need. We don't need guys just flying around uh, with speed and then trying to smash somebody to the ground. We need guys that can wrap and tackle. That's, that's how you, how you win football games. And we see a lot of people coming into this league and just smash them dudes. They just want that big highlight play. Uh, but, but to tackle guys and to win games. We've seen that one with Ronald Darby. I mean, how many tackles does that guy miss? He's just trying to dive and get a hand on him or just burst them over and knock them out of bounds. Uh, we need guys that actually want to get out there and tackle. Yep, I agree with you a 1,000%. 1,000%. That's my only issue with these small linebackers that I have is they, they get enveloped too quickly in a run game. But I, wanna, I do want to mention your boy here, though. You said this is probably our best pick of the draft. Kavon Wallace, safety Woo! out of- uh, I'll let you get the first bite on this one. What, what do you like out of Wallace? <laughs> oh, gosh. So he is the today's typical safety linebacker hybrid player that everybody looks for and that everybody really wants in to counteract this spread offense. So if I were to have to – if I were to make a pro comparison, which I hate to do, but if I were to have to describe his game and what he's going to bring to this team, he's basically what Malcolm Jenkins did. So he can play in the slot. He can play in the box. He's an in-the-box guy. Think of Cam Chancellor. Like I said, a Malcolm Jenkins type of a player that's going to play in the box, is going to help with the run game. You can send him on blitz packages. You can send him in coverage. Send him in cover three flat zones. Those types of things. His instincts, I love it. He's, he's a tackling machine, and, of course, he comes out of that defensive factory from Clemson. I, I love this pick. I do. That Yes, that is my opinion. That is the best pick of the draft. Danny, you want to go next? Turn your mic on. Yo, man. <laughs> chill out, chill out. Uh, <laughs> as you said, um, Max, the first two, first two picks were uh, random. But I think after the first two picks, the uh, we slide right back into where we need to be in positions we need to be drafting. So yeah. I don't really have any complaints with that. But also, if if you guys are done commenting on mm-hmm. uh, specific players we we drafted, we did get an addition at wide receiver, and I want to hear your guys' opinion on Goodwin. Mm. Uh, That's my response. Well, <laughs> we uh, just uh, traded. Uh, what was it? Just six round picks. Just, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah. Just the flip of the six rounders with San Fran. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the move. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and bash the idea of the idea because we definitely need wide receivers, and this guy is definitely a speed threat. He had a breakout season in 2017. Since then, hasn't gotten the opportunity, which is what I'm banking on here. I'm hoping because he hasn't gotten the opportunity. Uh, in San Fran over recent years, that we can use him uh, to his to his 2017 form, get him back there. Now he he did play four years with the Bills and three with uh, San Fran, as you mentioned. And um, I'd like to bring up his career. He was targeted 280 times and caught the ball 140 of those times. Now that's not to say the ball was overthrown or he just dropped it, but that's um now that's something to talk about. And as you mentioned, his, um, he did have seven touchdowns with the Niners, only six with the Bills. So I think this guy can be a better player than he has been playing. Uh, he's not a Pro Bowl player yet, but I think he can get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At the age of 29, though? He is 29, mm-hmm. but I, I feel like he, he's, got a, you know, he's got a few more years in him. Oh, yeah, he's got a few more years in him. I think, I think they're primarily going to work him into the slot, you know, kind of challenge Greg Ward Jr. there. All about speed. Oh, he oh he's got the speed. That's not the argument. He's got the speed. It's 
his catchability, which it, which you know, he really got the opportunity to to show that because his quarterback's always been terrible. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that's I mean, true. I'll give you that one. Over the last, I mean, before I mean, Jim. the Bills, the Bills had some rough guys uh, under center. Oh yeah, yeah. And now that with Wentz throwing him the balls down, that's and, and what I'm the, saying. I think this is there. this is perfect for Goodwin. I think this, you know, he I'm sure he'd rather be in San Francisco. Um, trying to get back into the bowl, but I think this is the best for his career. Yeah, I agree. I can agree with that statement. Um, I guess I just have the Nelson Aguilar just thing in my head where I'm just like, I'm just scared with some of these pricks, especially Rager. Like Rager, okay, Rager had a uh, had a a freshman quarterback throwing him the football at TCU, so you know most of those balls were overthrown. He they were uncatchable things of that nature, but I still seen him drop a couple of balls that he really should have caught, which is every receiver. But once again, it's just that I just got that Nelson Aguilar effect in the back of my head. I'm sorry. Like I, I respect his game. I love his game. I love the pick, but I just think the Eagles overreached. I think he's going to be a better player than Nelson Aguilar. But I, I do hope see he does. why you think that. I do see why you think that. I, I, uh, I'm just – I want to make this. I want to make this point about uh, Wallace here. Just, just trying to go on order here of these picks um, for me at least. Uh, Kayvon Wallace. This guy's uh, first of all from Clemson. Um, I'm, I'm finally on the board here with picking players that are from great football teams in college. Uh, we never go. I would just sometimes when I was younger, we just sit here and be like, all right, take somebody from Alabama. I mean, take somebody from Alabama. They're all great. Um, this is a guy who was a captain on the defense. Um, he looks like he has a good skill set, a good skill set all around. Maybe he doesn't have the speed, but I did want to ask you uh, say about about the nickel position here, mm. uh, which is what Roby Coleman just was brought in to do. It almost looks like Wallace is kind of the same player. I hope he can kind of play more of the Malcolm Jan- or of the Jalen Mills position on this team rather than the Roby Coleman, though. So Not enough people are talking about Roby Coleman, by the way. That is true, but he and, will. So go ahead, Tanner. Well, he's, you know, the infamous play he had uh, against New Orleans. That's what he's known for. But mm-hmm. not a lot of people were talking about the addition of him. That is true. That is a very underrated move that you are right and not a lot of people are talking about. Roby Coleman's going to be mostly playing as the slot corner. I don't know if you guys remember this game, but there was a game last year when the Baltimore Ravens played the, well, Los Angeles Chargers. And how they stopped Lamar Jackson, or at least they confused him, they sent out primarily six to seven DBs. Like, a defensive back was a middle linebacker, essentially, in this game. And that's – this is the direction that the NFL is going to. They want these type of players now, these players that can be interchangeable, especially now – honestly, and it's a shame that I got to say this, but with this spread offense, um, the linebacker role, especially the old-school thumper linebacker like your Jeremiah Trotters, they're becoming a thing of the past, unfortunately. So you need more speed on the outside. So a player like that, player like Wallace, you're definitely going to need. Oh, yeah, I was a big fan of the pick. Safety was a position that I thought we needed, and we were able to come through with a big-time player from a big-time team. Um, and I think he's going to make an immediate impact, not just on special teams, if that's where he's used also, but in, in that is as a part of that defense in that secondary. I want to move on here to Jack Driscoll, um, one of the more underrated picks of the draft. All right, this is an offensive lineman here, uh, protected uh, Bo Nix on the right-hand side at Auburn. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this guy was one of the keys about him is he's able to play guard or tackle. And listen, we don't really have too many backup <gasps> behind, you know, Brooks and Samalu and, you know, Dill are now going to step in. Who knows where, where he's at. But I think this guy's a good pickup for at Auburn, played in the SEC. Uh, great talent throughout the entire conference. And I like guys that have to go up against big-time players, guy that teams and, and guys that have to go up against uh, players from Georgia, for example, or from LSU, Alabama. I mean, any, when in doubt, you know, you just pick some, pick some big-time players from, from the SEC that, that they'll always uh, pan out more times than, than they won't. And I think this guy, Jack Driscoll, uh, started his career at the University of Massachusetts, then was a two-year starter at Auburn. Um, I think he's going to become maybe even, depending on what Sam Alu does, um, maybe even get in there, uh, start a few games, uh, barring injury. As a matter of fact, um, it's funny that you mentioned that because that's pretty much um, what the experts are saying and what they're thinking is that 
you know, eventually when Jason Kelsey does retire, the move is to take Siamalu and move him to the center position and have Jeff Driscoll play that left guard position. He'd be a big ass guard. I tell you that much right now. Um, I love I love the pick. Yes, like you said, it's a very underrated pick. Very good hands. Um, kind of needs to work on his footwork a little bit, especially in the passing game. But definitely a role grader on the inside. And I think he has more guard feet than he does tackle feet. Yeah. No, I agree. I think uh, I think with the addition of Dillard and Pete, or uh, excuse me, uh, Johnson still on the edges for hopefully years to come. Uh, this Driscoll guy, underrated. I really do think a lot of people look at the line and they say, okay, just a depth guy. No, I think this mm-hmm. guy is, is going to be a legit player for us. And I like having these these tackles uh, and guards, especially the combo players, because that was another need or where I was looking at. Um, I know our, our offensive line, the five stars are probably locked in for next season, but it's always good to have legit talent um, to back them up, not just extra bodies. We want legit talent behind them. Um, and, and then this guy, John Hightower, round five, uh, out of Boise State. Six, another, six receiver. Another, another flame, uh, a flame guy on the outside, a lot of speed. Uh, I think this guy, again, I, I, Boise State, a school out west, probably uh, we don't watch a lot of Boise State football, but um, just watching his a few highlights of his and and seeing his size, the one thing that stood out for me, his athletic ability. Yeah, he's got speed, but we need, especially if what if white side's not going to pan out for us, we need a, a go up and go getter. You know, we need somebody to go right. up for those balls, especially in the red zone. Right, That's a guy with a combination of size and speed could help us out uh, down inside the fifteen yard mark. Uh, and again, like I mentioned about white side, if he doesn't work out, because that's what white side was basically brought in here to do: uh, catch those 50-50 end zone targets. So far, only one season, but again, uh, didn't work out in, in year one. Uh, and we don't have much confidence in him panning out in year two either. So hopefully this guy Hightower, again, fifth-round pick. So uh, there's a reason why he, he's a fifth-round pick. But, again, I think uh, the size and the speed combination there is, is really good. Um, I definitely agree with that. 6'2", I believe, 190. Um, another speedster, like I said before, out of Boise State. Um, one of those guys are going to be the kick returner. And like you said, they didn't draft all these receivers just to have them – you know, play special teams or be the kick or punt return. Nah, they want these guys to contribute, especially after the J.J. Figure white side. Um, he's still an unknown because uh, we only seen him for his rookie year. Hopefully he improves. I hope and pray that he improves because otherwise that's another notch on Howie Roseman's record that is just – that's just unnecessary and doesn't need to be there, unfortunately. But I like – I like the fact that they're going with burners, and he's a tall burner. He's not he's not a short burner like Jalen Reger, 5'10", 5'11". He's six foot two, so he got some size. And, you know, he, he has the ability to go up there. So, Still. But um, – See you back over there? Yeah, I'm back. I don't know what the heck happened. <laughs> about that. Oh, all, all, I did, all I really said was I think we got like six guys that could possibly contribute to this team. Usually most seasons a lot of people only expect two to three. Uh, but this year, I think we have like six or seven guys that, you know, and not not saying it off the bat, but down the road could possibly contribute. In reality, you know, uh, Hightower and Watkins are going to be battling for a roster spot. Um, that's I think that's pretty obvious. Mm-hmm. But um, I think we got we did Sean get Bradley. a we did get uh, options. Sean Bradley from Temple inside linebacker, which is another position we needed. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we had our outside linebacker in Taylor at that point, and we ended up getting Sean Bradley inside linebacker out of Temple. Um, so, T, Tanner, you guys as big Temple guys. Uh, I'm not saying he's going to be – I'm not saying he's going to come in and step in uh, day one and be, like, the inside linebacker starter. But, mm. I mean, how, who knows? It's a possibility, uh, especially because of how weak our linebacking core is. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a possibility. Um now, he has the prototypical size of a middle linebacker. I remember watching a couple of games at Temple. And, you know, he was re- he was really the leader of that defense. Mm-hmm. Um, Three-year starter. Three starter at Temple. Yes. So, you know, he, and he wore the number five. So, as most people know, single digits at Temple means that you are a leader. So, the, the team looks to you. Yeah. So, obviously, he has some game. He's a good tackler. Um, like with most linebackers, unfortunately – at the college level, he gets eaten up with he, he gets eaten up in the run game, and at times his pass at times his passing game is questionable. But I think those are things that you can work on. But I think he can be immediate uh, contributor on special teams. 
Hey oh, guys, yeah. uh, I got an update. Uh, mm -hmm. Eagles are signing Western Michigan center Luke G uh, Jariga. Okay. okay. I have to watch right. him play on him. No, I don't know nothing about him. Okay. Three, but th three minutes ago. So now the undrafted free agents signings are starting to come in. <clears throat> well, uh, that, that's going to bring me to my next guy in this draft, which I think uh, out of all these players, this guy's probably our fastest one, uh, Quez Watkins. I think this guy could be a punt returner specialist, a kick return specialist. Uh, this guy has speed that – once he gets going, no one is going to come in and stop him. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, just how just how fast he is. He has that breakaway speed that uh, is rare. And to get him in the sixth round, I thought was – let me get this text message. No, on it, uh, Max. Updates. <laughs> Dog, go on it, Max. We are going live and you can't even control your own phone. Come on, man. You dumbass. What's going on back here, man? We know it's hard. And, uh, at this point here, Quez Williams, I think he's going to be a big-time player on this team. As a six-round pick, yes. You heard it here first. Quez Williams will be a producer on this team uh, just because That's of his speed. Spotless. Just, make, just making sure I got re everything recording when he said that. Cool. All right, cool. Quez Williams. Quez Watkins. Third it's it's Quez Wa or Quez Watkins. Watkins. <laughs> Williams. So make sure you, make sure you record that. Him saying yeah, both yeah. names. You go. Yes, I do. I got um, it. So we got uh we got what is that? Two other guys to talk about. Do you guys have any comments on Prince and our last pick as well? Prince was supposed to be a fourth, fifth round pick. Um, that's pretty much going to be your backup tackle. Like I said, he was supposed to be a fourth, fifth round pick, but he slid all the way to the what, what was the draft? And then the sixth round, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So 210th overall. Yep. So, you know, that was definitely a surprise pick. Um, he has the potential to possibly at least push, at least I'm saying this right now, he has the potential to push Andre Dillon. I will say that. He has that much potential. The ceiling for him is high. He's got to work on his feet a little bit. Yep. But, you know, he has tackles out of Auburn. We got yep. both tackles. Yep, so, you know, the potential is definitely there. And the edge rusher out of Stanford. Mm -hmm. Okay, with him, it's <laughs> – uh, he, he's raw. He's going to need to put a lot of weight on. Uh, a player, or is this kind of maybe somebody you'll, you won't see in a uniform? I don't think – I hate to say that. I hate to say that. I hate to um, put that kind of negativity out there, but it's – he could possibly be a contributor if he's willing to work hard and he's willing to, you know, grow his pass rush moves and evolve them. Mm -hmm. But if he fails to do that, um, unfortunately, his ceiling is just a uh, just a special teamer at this point because yeah. he really doesn't have the speed to get around the edge. And like I said, his moves are raw. He's very raw. So he's definitely going to need some work. But that's the time that you want to kind of take your projects where you can kind of see, you know, their potential. Yeah, I, I agree. I think you got, he's got to work on his hands, um, and he's not going to be able to bully people right over. You know, he's not going to get mm -hmm. around those uh, tackles uh, like a, as a speed threat off the edge. So he's got to work on his techniques and uh, be people with his moves, kind of open up his arsenal a little bit. So uh, that that wraps up the the, the picks for for the birds. I think I still got a few still got a few comments on the What's other. Up? But uh, on uh, you know, on other teams, not the birds. Mm -hmm. No, no, I, I, no. I was, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't yeah. wrapping it up there. But I did, I did think they filled a bunch of needs that that we all needed, especially the linebacking position. I would have liked to see Douglas get traded or Al Sean get traded, but I think, uh, I think we didn't really didn't need a corner because we have that guy doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Not that we have talent, just besides Slay, but we we, we do have depth, and uh, I would have liked to have seen. Uh, you know, maybe an edge rusher uh, up a little bit higher in the draft. But I agree. Most, I would love maybe even another running back. I know we have two on the roster. I would I believe to see a third get in there for the more competition. Uh, but again, for the most part, I think it, I think and the the draft may have not started out the way we thought it would, but but it definitely <laughs> went. The, by the what? end, uh, we got positions we needed. Uh, go ahead, Tanner. What, do you, what what other other things about the draft stood out? Well. For one thing, I just want to mention because we're dealing with our drama with who we drafted in the second round. Um, but uh, we're the a team that's dealing with the same kind of problem is the Packers because uh, the Packers draft Jordan Love, twenty sixth overall. That was with, a shocker. And Aaron Rodgers, who who has you know now he has a lot more to prove, but 
does I, I didn't think that made a lot of sense, but what does that say for coaching and how they really feel about Aaron Rodgers? Because in 2005, um, the Packers had a quarterback in Brett Favre, who's 35 years old, and they drafted none other than Aaron Rodgers, 24th overall. And the mm-hmm. same thing happens. History repeats itself um, in this draft this year with Jordan Love being drafted to a 36-year-old Aaron Rodgers. It, yeah, that, that definitely kind of raised my eyebrow Thursday night. I was like, man, I want to see Aaron Rodgers' reaction. Do like, you think he has nothing left in the tank? I think Aaron Rodgers still has a, another productive year left in him. I'm not going to say he Obviously. doesn't, but I think that pick was for, you know, future. I think they, there are, they are preparing for the departure of Aaron Rodgers. Do you know off the top of their head how many First years that Rodgers sat behind Favre? Did he go just one year or two years? No, it was about four. It was about four or five years. Oh, was it five? Jeez. Yeah, oh, that, that long. Yeah, he sat uh, behind him for a, for a little bit, for a nice little bit of time. And I I can remember the stories hearing, you know, when they interviewed Brett Favre, and you know Aaron Rodgers would try to get some advice from Aaron. Brett Favre would look at him like, "Man, I'm, I'm not I'm not telling you anything. You're not going to take my job. Screw you." <laughs> like, so. Aaron Rodgers was actually more of a sideline sh- uh, show, showing off his arm strength. When Brett Favre was starting quarterback, Aaron Rodgers was throwing balls to fans from yep. far distances and showing off his arm. What's funny is Brett Favre did that too in the beginning of his career, if you look it up. Yeah. So that's it's funny how things come full circle. We'll see about Jordan Love. That's one guy who's uh, you know not mentioned. Uh, I know Hertz was more of a popular pick. Uh, as far as from a quarterback standpoint and uh, top three, obviously. But Love is a guy we didn't hear much of at Utah State. No. Also, no, I, I want to I wanna correct ourselves before we go any farther. Aaron Rodgers sat behind Brett Favre for three seasons. Okay. Um, started in 2008. Okay. I know I know he sat behind him for, for a, a nice little while. But it was I, at least two seasons, yeah. But yeah, yeah. three for sure. I mean, fellas, we'll see how these how these draft picks pan out. Um, I, I just have a headache from the Jalen Hurts pick. I still do because I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. We got another week to think about it, T. Hopefully, uh, opinions change in a week. It will settle in a little bit longer. How about the um, How about the Redskins giving up uh, Trent Williams? They initially said they wanted a second rounder for him, but they give up um, this year's fifth round and next year's third round pick to th- uh, the Niners. Get him. From the Redskins, mm-hmm. obviously, because they have – it was coincidental because Joe Staley uh, is retiring. Right. And so that that helps them out a lot. And they only give up – in my opinion, they, they don't give up a lot for Trent Williams. No, they don't. 31 years Trent old. Williams, I guess just one Washington wasn't trying to deal with the headache anymore, Trent Williams. He has passed his prime now. On the, uh, He's past 30 years old, I think 31, 32 years old. And he so went out badly. Still very productive player. Niners are making moves. They are. Yes. They got uh Yeah, probably not the highest draft compensation you, you could have gotten. But at that point, I guess Washington was really just trying to get rid of them. Yeah. Um, and the Niners give up Breda to the Dolphins, and they give us Goodwin. So they're they're definitely making moves, trying to improve their team as a whole and get yeah, right back to where they were and farther than they were last season. Yeah. No, definitely agree. Uh, they had three good running backs last year. Um, and, and when you have uh, that many talented backs, it's a good problem to have. But at the same time, uh, it, it's a place where they can afford to lose one of them and gain something back, you know, another asset that can benefit them for the future. And I think Breida and Howard, that combination down there in Miami, it's going to be it's going to be a nice backfield down there. And can I before we end the show, because I know we have to cut off some from the beginning anyway, and we have some extra time but i want to bring up some patriots talk um i know our favorite team the patriots yeah but i believe they didn't draft a quarterback i I think you guys confirmed that um does this say that they're kind of letting what is it jared stidham take over or personally i think that this means that they're going to get a vet quarterback and I'm not talking Brian Hoyer. He's not going to get the job done. I'm talking maybe the ones that are still out there, James Winston, Cam Newton. It's definitely a possibility. Or will they tank? Jared mm-hmm. Stidham allowed Jared Stidham to tank the, tank the team and they, they go ahead and get Trevor Lawrence. <sighs> I don't think Bill Belichick will let that happen. Yeah, I don't think the Patriots are a team to tank. Nah. 
but it's you know it, it brings up some um some discussion with what this team's going to do. I don't think Stidham, to, but, but again, I didn't think Stidham was going to take this job over. But I will say this: uh, I'm very very surprised that they didn't take a quarterback. I like, agree. In some round, in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Even from or somebody like that. Right. Uh, but, again, the more I think about this, Stidham maybe does have the, the job for this upcoming season. Who knows? Mm. They didn't sound too confident in the way he was practicing uh, last season mm. and all that stuff. But, as you mentioned, uh, Jake Fromm, he slid. Uh, and he went to the Bills, but the Bills only got him because he was still there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't even think he was going to slide that far, unfortunately. But this is definitely a topic we're going to have to talk about next week, fellas. And watch out for the Dolphins. Yes. They had a pretty good draft pick. Draft picks. All right, y'all. You guys missed any of this episode, you know it's go to philly-experience.simplecast.com. Available on all major platforms. As a matter of fact, you're watching it right now on YouTube, as a matter of fact. And if you don't have the time to necessarily watch us or you can't stand to see any of our ugly faces you can always go to the go to any download platform and we are there hey our faces were made for radio t i agree uh, i agree you get no uh, argument from me on that one all right fellas all next right, week time next week what do we got next week you want to go thursday yeah you know yeah let's go thursday anybody got a problem with that cool ready to talk sports whenever all going right.